today on Houston Life, from his love for Houston to his private acts of kindness, we're going to chat with a local author shining a spotlight on President George H.W. Bush's life after the Oval Office. And we're exploring the beauty of America with a brand new IMAX film now showing at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Plus, the local shop making charcuterie board dreams come true. A look inside Houston Dairy Maids to see all the cheesy goodness they have to offer. And a hot spot where you can cool off this weekend. Details on how you and the entire family can experience Lagoon Fest in League City. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC 2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, July 1st, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. I'm Courtney Savala, getting some love from Texo right here, who's joining us today, looking extra scruffy. Extra scruffy. You know, everything was going so well um, until the intro started, and Tex just sort of stepped all over my I tablet know. and my notes. So if I seem out of sorts today, don't be surprised. What else is new? I'm just kidding. <laughs> what else is new? He's getting a, He's going to the beauty parlor tomorrow, um, which I can't wait. I love when he gets a fresh groom, a little blowout. We're so excited. Of course, you know, Houston Life, we are all about shining the spotlight on everything local, right? All Houston. Um, tonight, or ahead, tonight is the big finale at Top Chef. Yeah. Which our beloved Dawn Burnell, she is in the finals. We are so excited for her. You know, she, of course, was on on Houston Life back in March when this season of Top Chef debuted. She, besides being a James Beard nominated um, chef, she is also a former Olympian Incredible. who completed in the long jump in the 2000 Sydney Games. And that nomination for best chef in the Texas area was in 2020. So um, her restaurant, uh, her new restaurant is set to open um, later this year. And, um, you know, she was the executive chef over at uh, Culture. And if you've been watching the show, you know Don Burrell is sort of like, you describe her as like the underdog, right? From the beginning of the season. I always root for the underdog, right? And uh, I don't know, a lot of theories is that she's going to take the whole thing tonight, right? Let me tell you, Orlando and I have been obsessed with Top Chef since it began. We watch every season, we rewatched, we've watched Masters, we, we watch it all. And we are so impressed with her. We're, we're rooting her on, and I hope, I hope she wins. She is such an incredible chef. Um, and really, you know, her her style of cooking and the challenges that they that she's been through this this season has been really incredible. And to see her grow too, just her confidence growing. I, I want to eat her food morning, noon, and night. Well, she's a very versatile chef, she right? Really Whereas is. a lot of chefs do one thing really, really well. And I think on the season, uh, we've, you know, we've seen people do like their specialty, right? Asian right. cuisine. She's sort of like run the gamut in terms of her interests, right? She has. And let me tell you, the, the, um, the judges there love her. So I'm so excited for the finale tonight. Of course, more on Dawn's story and her run for Top Chef. It's going to air tonight on KPRC 2 at 6 p.m. So make sure you tune into that. And also, bravo, hello, Top Chef finale tonight at 7 p.m. There you go, Dawn Burrell. We are rooting for you. So I don't think I was born with, like, the gifted in the kitchen gene. Oh, I definitely wasn't. Yeah. Orlando, yes. Well, and lucky for me, you know, there's this joke in our house. I always say to Brandon, I probably say this about every single day, thanks for keeping me alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's true because he is the chef in our family. He's the cooker. He's the cook, and he, uh, he, he learned from his grandparents. You know, I used to cook when I was a single guy, when I was a bachelor, but Brandon does such a good job. Uh-oh, I think he needs to go outside. That it's almost, are you okay, buddy? <laughs> He's you okay? Yes. Here, I'm going to put him down on the uh, down on the ground. We'll let you take a little walk. But <laughs> sorry, a lot easier said than done. So, okay, because Brandon does such a good job in the kitchen, I sometimes wonder why should I even attempt? Why bother? Because when he's so good. He That's is so good. That's kind of how I feel. So a while back, he was making this pasta dish, and I think it was another one of these recipes TikTok that pasta. he had learned on TikTok. How did you know? I that? just knew it. Okay, so. Every time I would make pasta, right, I would I would take the pasta, I would dump it into a colander, and then I'd rinse it, whatever. Not Brandon, okay? So he, he has a totally different method. He actually was scooping out all of this pasta water. 
before before dumping the pot. And I, th I was like, why are you doing this? And he was like, what, what do you mean? This is the way, like you were never supposed to rinse pasta. Well, it turns out he is totally right. So according to Food & Wine, you should never rinse your pasta after cooking. And the reason is? Well, unless you're making a pasta salad, so that is the one exception. But when noodles boil, they release a starch. So the, the water gets sort of like cloudy. cloudy. Mm -hmm. And we always add salt to the water and typically like a little bit of olive oil or yes. something. And so when you're saving that pasta water, all of that cloudy goodness, you don't want to rinse it away. Because that water it helps to be like, become like a thickening agent for whatever sauce you're adding to the right. pasta. Wait a sec, but don't you just, what do you mean? I'm confused. You don't want to waste it away. I mean, you can you well, dump it out. So you can save some of the water. Right, and, and then, then you dump can dump it. the pasta out okay. into a colander, if you wish, you know. Yes. And then you would add the pasta water, some of it back in. Yes, yes, Before yes. adding the sauce. Okay, I thought you meant you were diluting, diluting, diluting the, mm -mm. the water. Okay. No. Um, I was a big pasta rinser. I know, I was. It's okay. Uh, somebody this told me space. along the way... <laughs> <laughs> that it's supposed to like not prevent, it's supposed to prevent sticking. But I think that's now in this world of several different varieties of pasta. So if you're using like a grain pasta or like a chickpea pasta, if you're gluten free, you know what I'm talking about, then you rinse. See, I've tried those like different types of pastas. Don't like them? Well, they kind of dissolve and turn into just mush. Let me tell you, you haven't tried the right one. What? What? Jovial what? is a rice, is a brown rice pasta. Jovial. Yeah. Okay. And then there's another one that's a chickpea based. It's an orange box. I can't think of Ooh, the name of it. Okay. Um, but chickpea pasta, it's really good. That one cooks a little longer, and that one you do have to rinse. And they don't turn into a mushy it mess. It does not turn into. Really? I really prefer the bow tie in the orange box one. Okay, I there like you go. A, I like a good bow tie. Um, okay, very nice. We learn things new here every we day. We do. So that's the story right there. Um, so one of my dear friends, Desiree Carvajal, she's in LA, and she and I worked in Midland together, and we had kind of a, a, a day, a, a moment down memory lane today because we were with each other. Um, the the moment that we had heard that Princess Diana had passed. Oh, no. Yeah. So today would have been her sixtieth birthday. Can you believe that? No, I cannot. July 1st is Princess Diana, the, of course, the people's princess. Um, and her sons, Harry and William, they unveiled that beautiful statue today. It is Good beautiful. to see the brothers back together. This is apparently, uh, the statue is uh, was created from one of her favorite photos of the boys um, that she had in her dressing area. Um, but it's a lovely statue. And what a, what a lovely tribute to their mom. Yeah, and wasn't it placed in one of her favorite gardens? Gardens as well, a place she used to love to visit. Yes, absolutely. And it's located in Kensington Palace, the Sunken Gardens, that is one of her favorite, all-time favorite spots. And it's there now for, for people to go and to visit and see, and it's lovely. It's unbelievable that even, what has it been, 23 years, 24 years perhaps? I think right. it was 1997 when she died. I cannot believe, still to this day, I cannot believe she is gone. She was just larger than life, her humanitarian um, mindset. I mean, yes. she traveled to places in the world uh, that members of the royal family certainly had never been to. And she Definitely was able not. to connect with people, uh, AIDS patients and folks who, you know, a lot of people were staying away from at the and time. And remember, remember the video of her in those hospitals and her touching the children who were uh, who were suffering from AIDS. Or children sitting on her lap. And holding them. And she really broke a major barrier a ahead of her time. Um, and, and she was just a, a lovely, a beautiful icon. Um, and, and we miss her, you know? I mean, I know she wasn't our princess, but she was the world's princess. Yeah, it's too bad. Wish yeah. you were still here. All right, well, we're going to take a turn now. Uh, still to come on Houston Life, forget about the fruit flies, <gasps> the creepy crawlies that could be lurking outside your home. What? And maybe inside as well. Well, I've got fruit flies, we so check that We found a roach box. in our new house the other night. Oh, well, that's a, a welcome one. wagon. Well, thanks Baby, so you know what that means? I'll pass. More's there. <laughs> now let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who's got a perfect place to take the family to cool off this summer. Ooh, girlfriend, you are ready. <laughs> I don't know who sent me on this live shot today, but it's absolutely the exact place I want to be. Look at this. I feel like we're not even in Texas. I've got all the details on how you can spend your holiday weekend right here on this beautiful beach at Lagoon Fest. We're in League City. Coming back to you in just a bit. Don't move. Houston Life will be right back. Just look. 
All right, welcome back to Houston Life, everyone. So there's good news and bad news. What's the good news? No, I'm kidding. There is no good news. I just said that to make you feel better. Oh. It's horrible news. There's an invasive species in Texas. I'm already itching. You know what? These are these are cuties, actually. No, it, they're not. This, well, do we have a photo of it? Hammerhead flat worms. It is like uncanny resemblance to Brandon's ex. I'm just saying. And apparently, they are popping up all over Texas. So here's the thing. Hammerhead flatworms, wasn't that the name of the dance squad you were on? <laughs> that was my nickname in high school. Uh, so they can reach up to a foot long. They live in the soil under rocks. And well, why what, don't they stay there? As well, because especially when it rains, they like to come out like regular worms, right? So they reproduce by laying eggs or by oh. detaching part of their oh. own bodies. Oh. And that way, oh, they turn into two flatworms. Flathead worms. My friend Kara posted a picture on this on her Facebook page yesterday, I believe it was. She had one in her driveway. She did for real? Listen, if that happened to me, a for sale sign would be up. <laughs> See, it must be good luck. They also say good that they luck. kind of, they get so flat. Well, you know. I never heard that flat snake heads are good luck. <laughs> That's not what they're called. <laughs> what, what is it, a flat worms? <laughs> Hammerhead flat worms. <laughs> I don't think that's on the good luck side. Well, it's not every day you find an invasive species in your front just, yard. Can they just stay in the soil? So if you spot one and got, want to Run. get rid of it, <laughs> <laughs> they recommend pouring citrus oil. Oh. Citrus oil smells divine. It's very good. Pick it up at your local nursery. Cornelius has it. Uh, salt or vinegar can also be poured on it. There is a full article on clicktohouston.com. Can I just you pour like the Morton salt on it? That's it. That's all I need to do? You could. Okay. It seems kind of cruel to do that. Just whatever you do, don't cut it in half because then you'll have to. Then you'll have multiplying <laughs> flathead hammer, whatever they're called. <laughs> Hammerhead flatworms. Do you know that, is it a gif, a gif of the, the Tom Hanks running from, uh, what's that movie he was in? Forrest Gump. Yeah, Forrest Gump. Yes. With him running like, that's me. Running from the worms. I don't know. Joe, save the day, please. What's our question of the day? I'm well, out. I know it's going to creep you out even more if those hammerhead flat worms didn't already. You know, we're asking everyone, what's the most unexpected critter you found in or around your home? Bonus points for pictures. We want to get those in. We already have some people coming in and commenting right now. Ursula, she writes saying, oh, and my favorite found this little guy. Aww. I don't even know what that it is. It's, it's a, a bat. bat. Oh, I've never seen a bat that big before. It's adorable. Oh, okay. Until it bites you. <laughs> Katie writes in a six foot beehive oh, in our world. No. Just think of the in honey the you're going to have. Oh, she has some work to do to get that out. And honey. Karen, look at what she puts in a gator. I see these all the oh. time in Louisiana. She has a video. She said, forget the pictures. I'm going to send in a video. Look at that. Oh, wow. What? What? Where is it? Is it right in the on back? the... Yeah, you, you're just like too far away banks? from there it, Oh, yeah, there it goes. There it is. Back into the pond. Well, look at oh. that. I can't. I, you got me already just shivering looking at this right here. We want everybody to head over to our Houston Life Facebook page and join the conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. Courtney and Derek, I got to get what you guys think. You said you found a roach in your new home. I'm in the bathtub, just get this, in the bathtub, enjoying my bubble bath with a glass of wine. I open my eyes and there's a tree roach floating on top of the suds. Don't even ask me what happened <laughs> after. I would die. I mean, I suds literally- Suds and water I, all over the bathroom. Screaming, yelling, the whole nine. The I can't bathtub handle it. is a safe space and it's you It's not, don't... they want to drink the water. Well, but That's when... where they come up the drain, oh. sorry. All I'm saying though is when you are not wearing clothing, like it's even scarier to right. encounter a roach. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Oh. I, I don't can't. need it. My mom did have a family of skunks in her fireplace. Oh, so was in the that's so cute too. Very dangerous. Skunks are very cute. Very oh, dangerous. Dear. They're cute. Pass. I know. All, All right, right, Joe. Thanks. I'm itching from head to toe now. Me too. What better way to celebrate America this weekend with some white sand, beautiful beaches, and tons of water attractions? Yeah, Lagoon Fest is Houston's hottest waterfront getaway with fun for the whole family. Lauren Kelly is down in League City this afternoon with more. And Lauren, you got to tell us. What are those things like behind you? Was that a giant purple slide we saw earlier? That is absolutely a giant purple water slide. And they have all of the best water attractions here at Lagoon Fest. If I were to tell you that I'm in Texas, I know you wouldn't believe me. So that's why I brought our very good friend, the high tech Texan, Michael Garfield. Tell us Hello, you how us are today. you? I'm actually the high Texas city Texan okay. today. Is what it is. True. The only thing missing, Derek Courtney, come on. This is where you need to do the show. <laughs> Get out of that. There's a lot of sun. Hey, this is, I appreciate you coming. I'm a longtime partnership with all of the, uh, the Lago 
Diego Mar and the uh, Lante okay. House folks. Okay. Bottom line, this is the Crystal Lagoon. This is a 12 acre, 24 million gallon, totally turquoise. Hold on, lagoon. you guys can't see the whole thing from where we're standing, <laughs> just a part of it. But look over oh, here, God. photographer Paul, just walk that way. It, the place is massive. It's this huge. Is massive. This is the, one of the largest crystal lagoons in the country, and it's a high tech way to filter it out, which I don't want to get into. Okay, that's where you come in. I exactly, see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But this has been around for about a year right now, and it is part of the Lago Mar community where residents, this is a part of their amenities right okay. now, but half of it is open all the way through Labor Day for guests to come. So tickets, $20 for adults, $15 for kids, okay. and you can come and you have all this stuff, all the fun in the sun. Are you kidding me? And that's what I really want to push is that it's open to the public. It's not just for the people that live over here. It really is. And by the way, uh, we appreciate you just trying to walk up and coming. I would recommend going to the websites, LagoonFestTexas.com, because they have time slots that are open because it does sell out. And this weekend, we've got Kevin Fowler. There's a whole concert series throughout don't, the entire Don't talk thing. about that yet. I want to save that for a little bit later on the show. <laughs> there is the literally team. so much to do here at Lagoon Fest in League City. Michael, don't go anywhere. You guys, you throwing it. it back to you in studio. We've got a little bit of drink sipping to do and more exploring to do here at Lagoon Fest, but we'll tell you about that concert series coming up a little bit later on in the show. Okay. okay. Looks so great. Picture perfect. We'll see you in a bit, Lauren. <laughs> All right. When we come back, don't let the Texas heat prevent you from getting a comfortable night's sleep. Details on how a new mattress can stop the night sweats and help you sleep cooler. Sounds perfect. And how can how you can explore the great outdoors with a new IMAX film. Joe Sam is standing by with more on that. Hey, Joe. Hey, Courtney. Yeah, that's right. Just ahead, I'm talking to the stars of a new IMAX film, Into America's Today Wild. This is going to take you on a beautiful and visually compelling adventure through nature. Find out where you can see it in 3D when Houston Life returns. Turns. All right, this is a common problem in Houston. Are you too hot to sleep? Well, if you've been losing sleep over night sweats, it may have to do with the heat your mattress is retaining. Lucky for us, Texas mattress makers ensures a cooler night's sleep with their ice blue technology cooling fabric. Check this out. At this factory at Lockwood and Navigation, the team at Texas mattress makers is hard at work building hundreds of mattresses every day. They've been building quality mattresses using locally sourced materials for more than 40 years. Yuval Meichler, the owner, says at this time of year, many Houstonians have trouble sleeping. The culprit? Heat. Your body heat literally penetrates through the fabric, through the first layer, and maybe sometimes the second layer, depending on how much you weigh, how wide you are, and how you sleep. So what's happening is your heat is on top, your body heat that penetrated is on the bottom, and basically you're sleeping in a convection oven. So you're heating up the bed. Absolutely. The bed is staying warm Correct. and then making you even hotter. Correct. Everybody has heard of gel, cooling gel, memory foam, and so on and so forth. Those don't work. They actually retain more heat. And it's because they're foam, right? You've always taught me if you're sleeping on anything that's foam, the foam is going to hold on to your body heat. Always. Okay? It's just the nature of the beast. Foam does a great job supporting the body, but it also retains heat. The solution? A special fabric barrier on top of the mattress that prevents your body heat from getting trapped. It's called ice blue technology, and with one touch, I was a believer. This feels cool to the touch. So if I were to sleep on a bed like this, I would not warm up throughout the night. The bed would not absorb not my body heat. Right. The cooling fabric does not allow your body heat to penetrate it, which means that the second layer under you will never get warm. It is not what is inside the mattress. It's what this fabric does on top of the mattress. It literally does not allow you to push your heat through into the top layer of the mattress and to keep you warm. It will take you 20 to 30 days and all of a sudden you will wake up in the morning and go, I'm no longer sweating in bed. I'm no longer hot in bed. I'm more comfortable in bed. And if you're worried about supply issues, not here. Unlike other mattress stores where product is just sitting around in a warehouse waiting to be purchased, or stores that have items back ordered for months at a time, at Texas Mattress Makers, their mattresses are made to order just for you. 
It will cost you less, and your mattress will be delivered within a few days. When you come here and you buy something, I don't tell you thank you very much. We'll deliver it to you in three months or two months. If you bought a mattress today, five working days from today, if you choose, that mattress will be in your house. If you buy something extraordinarily different, I will tell you at the point of sale exactly when that mattress will be delivered to your home. Texas Mattress Makers knows how to help you get a better night's rest because they build every mattress from the ground up. And Uval doesn't just promise you'll pay less and sleep better, but with their ice blue technology, you'll also sleep cooler. I am telling you, feeling is believing. It really works. Now is the time to shop for a new mattress that'll help you sleep cooler during Texas Mattress Makers Summer Sale. Shop and save up to 35% off, plus free delivery on select mattresses. Just visit TexasMattressMakers.com or call 713-341-6252. Now let's send things over to Joe Sam with more on a new attraction we don't want to miss this summer. Hey, Joe. Hey, Derek. That's right. A brand new IMAX film is now playing at the Houston Museum of Natural Science called In into America's Wild. Now this film will take you on a visually stunning adventure that encourages audiences to tap into their inner trailblazers. I got to chat with two of its stars, John Harrington and Ariel Tweedo, to learn more about the beauty of the great outdoors. Into America's Wild at the Houston Museum of Science. This is where you can check it out. And we have two of the stars here with us, John and Ariel, to talk all about it and how we can explore along with them. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks. This is going to be fun. I think a lot of people are ready to get back out and get back into nature and explore with that fresh air. John, we're going to start with you first. Tell us a little bit about the film and what we're going to be able to see with it. Well, I had a chance with Ariel to go across the United States, uh, places you've never seen before, or you may be familiar with, but you haven't been there, uh, in this expansive uh, 3D environment uh, on IMAX. It's just, it's absolutely fabulous. You'll feel like, you actually feel like you're there. There were some things that you had to learn. Let's talk about some of the places that both of you did go and explore, and what were some of the areas that you learned something about? We were all over America. I think um, my favorite place that I went to and learned something was in Hood River. I got to go and kiteboard, which was, <laughs> it was so much fun and I was so horrible. But then by the end of the day, I actually got up, which was exciting. And then we got to go canoeing in Watkins Glen. We hiked all over like Arizona. Um, we, we were in Texas and went to um, the Alamo and got to do the whole river walk. We were in St. Louis and went into the arches. Um, we were in Alaska. Like it, we, were, we were all over the place and just constantly learning about how amazing America is and how, how accessible being in nature actually is. When I want to learn from both of you, what do you expect people to take away with? once they finish watching this movie? I I just want them to get outside. I think when you're outdoors, you feel you're not being judged. It doesn't matter if you're yellow, black, white, purple, green. Nature doesn't care. Mother Nature doesn't care. And you just feel better. You're happier. Your endorphins are going. And so I want people to leave the theater and then go climb a tree, go jump in the ocean, <laughs> go play in the lake, go get dirty. I love it. Same thing for you, John. What do you want them to take away? It really fills you with a sense of appreciation for what you have here and the importance, because this is what we have. We don't have planet B. It's not out there. And uh, we need to take care of the planet we have, because if, if we're not here, we're not going out there. Mm -hmm. And so that was a OG whiz moment for me. Again, John and Ariel, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, beautiful film there. Again, you can check it out um, Into America's Wild, playing now at the Houston Museum of Natural Science until Monday, July 5th. And you can head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv, to find more information about the film. Y'all, not only is this beautiful as far as the visuals are concerned, but the music also incorporates in all that natural sound that we have, and it's being narrated by Morgan Freeman. Uh, Smooth sound. Win -win. Wow, beautiful. Can't Absolutely. wait to see it. Thanks, Joe. Well, still to come, you know, it's all about the cheese. If you can't find it at this place, you don't need it. Hundreds of varieties are available at the Houston Dairy Maids, including some delicious Texas brands as well. This is going to take your charcuterie board to the next level. And we'll get a check of what's coming up on KPRC 2 News at 4 o'clock when Houston Life returns in just two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you at 3.30 on this 
Friday Eve. Yeah, we had a lot of chat about bugs. Earlier, we were asking you, what is the weirdest critter you've ever found lurking in and around your home? Here's some of what you had to say, starting with Sherry. She writes in, found an albino peacock in my backyard. Oh, my word. How beautiful. I love peacocks. They're very pretty. And very loud. Uh, yes. Katie writes in, an opossum in my kitchen oh. on New Year's Eve. Look up on top of the cabinets there. Oh, <laughs> my... I literally would be freaking out. I wouldn't oh, be able to take a photo. Well, no, possums are so adorable. Their teeth just look just mean. Just don't touch it. Just don't touch it. <laughs> don't put your fingers close to their, their mouths. Elizabeth says, a chicken started roosting under my house. No idea where it came from. I was able to get someone that had chickens to come get her. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. I'm, I'm very impressed with everybody today because they did get bonus points because they provided photos. The photo proof is great. I think the possum wins the day, though. I would think so. I'm like, where's the possum? <laughs> ah, right there. <laughs> All right, let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look what they have coming up at the top of the hour. Hey, guys. Hey. Wow, some inter that yeah. albino peacock, wow. I know. Crazy. I know. Yeah. Growing up in Michigan one time, we found a flying squirrel in our fireplace. You hear oh. something tapping, and we opened the glass, and there was one of those metal screens, and that thing came <laughs> flying to the screen, and I flew backwards, and I was a kid. We don't have flying squirrels in Michigan. It came from, like, Canada or oh, something. Oh, goodness gracious. So we had, to oh. call, we had to call the rescue center. <laughs> Making the migration. Yeah. We had a coyote in our front yard. Oh, boy. Ooh. No, thank yeah. you. Remember 2011? I don't know if you were around, but the, the, we had that big drought. I, yes, I All remember that. All kinds of possums oh. yes. and coyotes. Every, everything was coming in the city looking for looking, water. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, can you help oh, us out wow. here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, it was a really skinny coyote because he was looking for food, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. You, well, you, you don't, don't want to find it. You come across a, a hungry coyote. Well, a hungry he wild was, anything. He was sort of limping along, but it was scary. Yeah. Oh, scary oh, for gosh. me. Oh, Yeah. Anyway. I, you got you to see Frank. When, you, you need to see Frank when he's hungry. My gosh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we okay. got some storms popping up out there, right? You know, right. And, and really just a few showers. If you look at the Southwest Freeway, a couple things here. Notice how it's slowed down because because there's some water on the roads there. It's been rather wet with a shower coming across, but you can see clearly a lot of sunshine there in the Galleria area. Temperatures in the upper 80s and low 90s. It, radar's not impressive. You'll see a little shower or two that's been popping through. I have the lightning turned on. No, none of that. You may have gotten one or two bolts out there, but not much in the way of lightning. In fact, most of this has been all along the coast coming in with the sea breeze. So we'll keep an eye on it, but I tell you what, the future cast really dwindles things by 8, 8.30, if not sooner. Certainly as the heat of the day is lost, we'll be uh, on the dry side. And tomorrow, for the better part of the day, we look pretty dry, but look at this. That, all of that activity, that's the front that we've been talking about all week long that's on the way tomorrow, and that's what will be here for our holiday weekend. So we'll talk about that at 4 o'clock. I, I know you want to know. Pro uh, Tropical Storm Elsa, by the way, uh, 45 mile an hour winds. Notice this is the 1 p.m advisory. I'll have the 4 p.m. coming up in our, in our newscast, but this is booking. 28 miles an hour is the motion right now. That takes it into the Caribbean very quickly, into the Gulf as we get into Monday and Tuesday morning, and you can see Florida looks like it will be in play as the uh, beginning of the week as that system moves in their, in their direction. So, uh, we'll track that. It may have changed by four, but I don't think it's going to change much. Showers in by sunset. There's our holiday weekend front we'll talk about. A tropical storm, Elsa. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it yes. go, yeah. Yep. All right, Frank, thank you, sir. We you want bet. to give you a look now at some of the stories that are be making headlines we'll be covering this afternoon. What is in that water? A new pollution concern along the ship channel. We'll have a live report from KPRC 2's Bill Spencer. Plus, President Biden meets with first responders in South Florida as crews continue sifting through the rumble of a collapsed condo building in a desperate search for additional victims. 145 people are still unaccounted for exactly one week since that condo fell. Then ID, caller ID, how the feds are honoring James Bond to help make sure what's showing up on your caller ID is actually the number calling you and you are not being spoofed. A lot of us uh, have fallen victim to that, so we uh, good good report to watch there yeah. for sure. Interesting. All right, guys, we'll see you at 4 o'clock. We're going to shift gears now and talk about cheese, folks. So I've never met a cheese I didn't like, cheddar, gouda, brie, and I am always willing to try something new. There's some good stuff out there, and that's where the Houston Dairy Maids come in. They specialize in finding artisan American cheesemakers who make their cheese by hand and bring them to us uh, to broaden our love for cheese. You guys, I'm totally embarrassed to even admit this. This is my first time here at the Houston Dairy Maze. Melissa, shame on me. It's okay. You're here now. <laughs> Everything's better. Right now, cheese board, charcuterie, they're kind of the hottest thing to do right now. But before we get into the spread in front of us, give us a little bit of a history because 
If you can't find a cheese here, mm -hmm. there's a cheese problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We have over 150 cheeses in house. Um, it does rotate a lot of our selections. We have a lot of Texas cheeses, uh, cheeses all around the United States that we get here. Mm -hmm. If if we are a little intimidated, we can come here and you'll walk us through the process. Yeah. So a lot of people are familiar with the gateway cheeses like Manchango and Stilton and kind of your basic brie. We definitely have those in house, and we're happy to guide you to kind of the next level of cheese or something that's more local. Okay, I'm drooling over here because you have <laughs> a couple boards set up. What is going on here? So we have a nice cheese that we actually sent to space. This is called Old Farm Doll. Uh, it went up with Shannon Walker a few months ago. Okay, I'm sorry, a space cheese? Yes. So space not cheese. this particular slice, it didn't go back, but this that's brand true. went up in space. Yes, it was really fun to be able to you know, send that up with her and, you know, it's great that she's a fan of uh, Houston Dairy Mates too. Absolutely. Yes. Can I try this Belgian? Of course. Let me cut you a little slice. Fabulous. Um, this particular rind you don't want to eat, but okay. um, it is pretty on the plate, so we serve it with that. Mmm. It's lovely. Nutty, kind of. Mm -hmm. And it's softer than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. It's an aged Gouda, but it does have a nice sliceable texture. Nuts always pair well with cheeses. We like hazelnuts because they're kind of neutral. Um, we've got a fig cake here from Spain. This is um, a kind of a gluten-free option too if you don't want crackers. Uh, it's fig and almonds and it's just compressed. Um, this one here is Membrio. That's quince paste. That's also a traditional condiment from Spain. Um, people tend to pair it with the harder cheeses. It's just like a little bit of sweetness and different texture. We have um, salami here. You know, you can put a meat of your choice or no meat. Um, pickles always go nice with fattier meats, and um, the acidity really helps kind of cut through that heaviness. And of course, your cracker of your choice. We like the Torelli crackers. They have a nice kind of breadstick texture and uh, nice to eat plain, you know, to go with your cheese so it doesn't outshine. And I love the fact, too, that you guys really focus on some Texas cheeses mm -hmm. and local cheese. That's kind of like a priority for you guys. Yeah, I think that was um, the owner's intention when she started this cheese business was to bring Texas cheeses to the Houston market. So uh, there wasn't really much, you know, a fanfare about it before, but now they're getting a lot more limelight, which is lovely. Okay, it is really one-stop shopping. So again, 150 different varieties of cheese under that roof. They also have wine, they have meats, they have everything that you could possibly need to build your board. They also offer pickup and delivery and also weekly cheese selections. Oh, cool. And then they'll say like, this is the wine that you should pair it with. So they take all the guesswork out of it. Super cool, I can't wait to try it. I know, it's a great place. Definitely give them a shout out. We do have a link to connect with the Houston Dairy Maids on our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, our conversation with Jean Becker, George H.W. Bush's former chief of staff. There she is right there getting ready. She is sharing insight on the president's life after the White House. Houston Life will be right back. After leaving the White House in 1993, President George H.W. Bush became a private citizen and one local woman was right by his side to see his remarkable journey until his passing in 2018. We are talking about his former chief of staff, Jean Becker, author of the new book, The Man I Knew, who joins us now with an inside look of his life in Houston. Jean, it's so great to see you. I've already had so much fun talking to the two of you during the break. <laughs> We're going to need an hour here, folks. I, think I know. So too. I think so too. And we we were just chatting about two really cool stories uh, in the commercial break. Let's start with the first one because, of course, today would have been it would have been Princess Diana's 60th birthday. And well, this is obnoxious name dropping. President Bush would not approve. But I met Princess Diana once. Mm. I met her when the Bushes were in the White House. Yeah. And we were in London for the G8 summit and she was visiting with Mrs. Bush, and Mrs. Bush waved over her, I worked for Mrs. Bush then, waved over her staff and introduced us, and I was just, you know, celebrity struck. Right. And it's the kind of thing now that I think, did I really meet Princess Diana? Well, maybe not. No, but it happened. It happened, yeah. it did happen. What an incredible life you've had, and I to have. witness, you know, along the way. But it works both ways, Courtney. The other story I was telling you too, 
when it comes to celebrities, I've been so lucky on the exciting, interesting people I met right here in Houston, Texas, in the Astros locker room at Minute Maid Park. Mikhail Gorbachev once told me to shut up. <laughs> And I'm oddly very proud of that. I would be too. <laughs> you know, so here's the deal. It's President Bush's 80th birthday, huge fundraising event for MD Anderson, right. for the Bush Library and School, for Points of Light. We raised, I think, $56 million. There's 20,000 people in Minute Maid Park waiting for the show to begin. And George Herbert Walker Bush and Mikhail Gorbachev, the two people who ended the Cold War, are in the Astros locker room doing vodka shots. I have now heard it all. <laughs> and the President of the United States is there. That would be the 43rd President, George W. Bush. He was then President. And it was time for the show to begin. And I said to the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the world, you need to get your dad oh my gosh. out there. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, that's not my job, that's your job. So we had this little argument. And so I went over and I said, President Bush, it's time for the show to begin. You all, need, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to put in this and go out there. And Gorbachev was like, put, 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 put. so I said to his interpreter, what did he just say? He said, uh, he just told you to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> It's Great story. so <laughs> remarkable, Gene, that not only um, you know have you met all these heads of state from around the world, to have such a close relationship. It was 25 years you were chief of staff yes. for H.W. Bush. Yes. So just sort of give us an overview of what people can expect from the book, because the Bush family, they are just so beloved in Houston and beyond. And it sounds like you had a front row seat for this incredible family and this incredible life of his. I did. Uh, it was... You know, how lucky am I? I grew up on a farm in Missouri, and how lucky was I to be chief of staff to this man and to get to know this family so well. And one of the things about the book, there are big stories, but there are little stories. And, and I think that's what's gonna surprise people. I'm gonna tell you one little story, that it, and I want people to know the book is full of stories like this, but because you two are so fun, and I know your fans are so fun. Here's one of my favorite stories in the book. It's a Saturday, we're in Kennebunkport, that other place where they occasionally live. And President Bush and I have been in the office all day. We're leaving, the, I'm leaving the next day to go to the Republican convention, 2000, George W. is gonna become the nominee. So much work to do. And finally about five o'clock on that Saturday, I said to President Bush, I have got to go home, sir. I've got to go home and do laundry. I was on a 7 a.m. flight the next day. They were coming on Monday. And just to make the point how urgent my situation was, I said, if I don't go home and do my laundry, I will have no clean underwear for the convention. <laughs> so I run to the store, I buy detergent, I run home. My, that's back when we still had answering machines. It's already full of more messages. And the first one is a woman named Leslie Goodman who was in charge of media for the convention. And she left me a message and said, I need to talk to you right now. Well, I started my laundry first, priorities. And then I called her back and she said, uh, Jean, I just tried you at the office. And I knew it was President Bush who answered the phone. I recognized his voice immediately. But rather than go all goo goo ga ga, I said, uh, may I speak to Jean Becker, please? To which the 41st president of the United States said, I am so sorry. She has gone home. No. Apparently, she has no clean underwear. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, so I, I said, Leslie, I will call you back. Wow. So I hung up on her. I called the office. He had left by then, thank heavens. But who, I mean, was it really my job to say to him, please don't tell people no, I don't have clean underwear? <laughs> no. But I feel like that story That's just sort of underscores humor, right? just how close you two yes, truly were. We were. Well, and coincidentally, Courtney and I were both reporters at that uh, at Republican that convention. convention. You first, were? Yeah, yes. First Union Center I in probably yelled at you at one point. We, probably. We, maybe so. Stand over there. It was <laughs> either, you, know, I, you didn't say shut up. You might have said cheers, <laughs> but you didn't say shut up. Um, let's talk about some of the other quotes, because, you know, there's so many great stories, of course, that uh, the president and his wife have. Uh, you know, you mentioned about how he loved to throw surprise parties for her. Uh, but what about the, the quote about the Kardashians? Explain that story. 
you know, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Always comes and back so to I, the Kardashians. That's actually the very end of the book, and I talk about the, one of the things I loved is there was nothing we couldn't talk about. And that he felt comfortable. We talked a lot about uh, death and dying, mm -hmm. and we could talk about just about everything. Well, one day, he called me into his office, and he said, Gene, I have a question for you. Just what is a Kardashian? <laughs> I keep seeing that word, and I don't know what it means. And I think he looked it up in the dictionary. I'm sure he did. And he said, it's not in there. What's a Kardashian? So I sort of explained it, and he's like, no. No. <laughs> wow. Dean, we could chat with you all day long. I can't believe five minutes went by just like that. But I have ten more stories to tell you. <laughs> well Can I do I have ten seconds? Ten seconds. Yeah. So I want all of Houston to know in the fall of 2018, we're in Maine, his health is failing. We didn't think he would survive the trip home. Right. This is how much he loved Houston. And so his aide, Evan Sisley, and I sat down with him and suggested to him we stay in Maine. And we're sort of beating around the bush. And finally he said, are you two asking me where I want to die? And we said, we are. And he said, take me home. Oh, that is That's lovely. That's how we felt about Houston. That is so lovely. I know. And we loved hearing your stories, love seeing you in person. We're glad that you're here. And of course, The Man I Knew is available right now in bookstores. For more information and to connect with Gene, check out the link in the scene on Houston Life section of our website. It's great to see you. Great to Becker, see you. This was fun. Thank you so much. This was great. Houston Life will be right back. Lagoon Fest in Texas City is now open, and let me tell you something. If you want to bring the family out to cool down, just take a look around at this beautiful lagoon. It's the largest in Texas, and telling us all about this. And the little snack that we have today is Michael Garfield. Thanks for coming back and joining us. I got a mouthful of stuff. It, it, it <laughs> Stop is hot eating out it. We got to tell everybody. This is called the frozen jaloo, okay. and I got tahini on top of mine. You girl have got gummies on yours. You're going to be all sugared up I, after this. I've been trying not to eat it so I can it show you guys it may not be alcohol. I'm not so really they also sure. have one that's called a Jaloo 21. That that's the one for adults. They of course have some without. Can I see but your ID, please. Yes, you can. So let's talk a little bit about all the fun stuff that's happening at Lagoon Fest because I feel like the the list just goes on and on and on. Well, it really does. This is uh, about one year old and it's in Texas City, right off I-45. Very easy to get to. It's the center point of the Lagomar community. However, even though this is for residents, it's open through September Labor Day for guests. And if you go to the website and get pick a time slot, they are selling tickets. Okay. Tickets start at twenty dollars for adults. $15 for kids, 12, 12 acres with 24 million gallons of turquoise. And it's always turquoise. Michael, but how is it always this color? How do you, who's your pool guy? Who does up here? Girl, I'm here 24 <laughs> 7. I got the Speedo working. No, it actually is a really, it's a, it's a really high technologically advanced system that they have the pumps. And there's look, crystal lagoons are all over the world, but this is the largest one in Texas. And they're building them all over the place. But this is such a focal point of this great community. You really feel like you'll be transported again out of the country. It's magnificent. They've got the cabanas, they've got the drinks, they've got the food, uh, the whole nine yard. And I also have to mention, since it's a holiday weekend, there's something special happening tomorrow night, too. We tease the concerts. It is concerts, right. So, in a way, all through July, there is a concert series and as you can see right here on the beach they are bringing concerts every weekend and tomorrow by the way what a great way to start off july 4th kevin fowler oh, for all you country texas kevin country Fowler's, yes texas hill is on saturday which is a country trio they literally open a stage right next to the lagoon it starts after seven o'clock and again go to lagoonfesttexas.com to get those tickets and you can sit there and watch and party all night i mean this is like the most instagrammable beach spot i think in the entire city right i've already checked yours out i know <laughs> Between the shots, I'm, I'm, I'm already filled up my Instagram. Tell and it's me. Exactly. Hashtag Lagoon Fest Texas. It, well, give us the YouTube. website really fast. It's LagoonFestTexas.com. And you know what? The folks here did something really, really special for the KPRC viewers. If you want to come out to any of the concerts, specifically tomorrow, this weekend, buy one, get one free. KPRC is the promo code. Buy one, get one free tickets. Cheers, Michael. Thank you so much. Houston Great Life will be right back.
Tomorrow on Houston Life, she's breaking into Hollywood with a new film next to Snoop Dogg. We're gonna chat with Houston actress Juliana DiStefano about the new horror flick, Blood Pageant. Oh, wow, all right, plus the best seat in town for 4th of July fireworks. We will have the 411 on the downtown rooftop bash mm. where you can party like a VIP. That's coming up this weekend. Hard to believe it is already July 4th weekend happening. I know, and you know what? It's Friday Eve, which is always good. So always that's going to do thing. it for us today on Houston Life. What a fun show. We're going to send it over to Keith and Christine, standing by for the news at 4.